Mesa TV presents in three, two, one. Dateline Schools with your host, Terry Harrington. Well, this week on Dateline Schools, we're learning about the Port Huron Museum as we continue in our series of looking at the organizations and agencies that support our kids. And to tell us about the museum, a special guest is Executive Director Susan Bennon. Susan, you know, we've kind of intermingled the whole, all week long talking a little bit about the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. When you go out there, you see a lot of buildings around the lighthouse. Give us an update what's going on with those. Well, with the, the Fog Signal Building is the gift shop, and that will stay that way for the next couple of years probably. The Duplex is, is housing our overnight program, very popular program. Uh, the uh, four bay garage was completed in the spring of 2013 and that is actually going to be it's available now for rent for showers weddings reunions this is the first season we're able to offer those special events and we're doing okay on some bookings it is a premier property and and you can do you can do just about anything there and have a wonderful site to do it Another piece that you're working on, too, is the old hospital. Tell us about that. You know, that's that Tyvek-wrapped thing that's been <laughs> sitting there for a long time. And uh, uh, to make a long story short, that was actually two, uh, the last existing building from Fort Gratiot. And uh, after the fort closed in 1879, it was split into two buildings and actually were homes, one on State Street, one on St. Clair Street. And sometime around 2000, the library, or excuse me, the museum purchased one of those homes, and shortly thereafter purchased the other. It was moved to the city property, um, both sections, put on a foundation, and it sat for a very long time. Well, a group from the St. Clair County Medical Society, as well as interested people in the community, said, this can't go on. This needs to be done. So last year, it was in such disrepair, we quick gathered up as much money as we could find, put it back to one building with a central hall just like it would have been in 18 in the 1850 or 1800s rather and um, we're all ready into phase two you'll the dormers were built in the spring um, we're looking at siding we're which has all been purchased we just need to get it up we've got a group from the National Park Service that's going to come in September and help us do some construction on it so we're really going to have another wonderful story to tell the oldest building in St. Clair County it was both a hospital as well as a military uh, station so we're going to be able to show both parts of our history there which was key to westward expansion there's just a whole bunch of reasons why that should be saved how can the community support what you're doing here at the museum well, we'd love to hear from the community. We'd love to hear what kind of things you want to see. A few days ago, I mentioned the Underground Railroad. That was the number one educator request, and we're happy to comply with that. Um, we always need volunteers. We do not have a millage. We operate just like any other business on admissions and grants and stuff. That's how we fund ourselves. So um, we'd like to see more of you at, m at more of our events and functions and exhibits. So we're proud to be here. And where can they get more information? They can go to www.phmuseum.org, or they can call me here at my office at the Carnegie Center. For Dateline Schools, I'm Terry Harrington. Dateline Schools is a production of St. Clair County Research.